In this video, we're going to cover how to get a sketcher model into Unreal Engine for beginners. Let's get into it. So the first place we start when we're talking about bringing something in from SketchUp into Unreal Engine is Datasmith. Now this is a piece of software that allows you to export from all these programs into Unreal Engine. So give that a little Google, just Unreal Engine Datasmith. Hit download. Sorry, not that one. There we go. Get the plugin. Um, and then it gives you the option for all these different programs. For SketchUp, you would download this one, but obviously you've got all the other options there. I've obviously got that pre-installed, ready for this video. Well, I use Unreal Engine anyway, so I've got it installed. And then for this example, we're going to go in somewhat blind with a random selection from 3D Warehouse. And it's this Casa Madera. So starting here, what I would recommend is that you remove certain assets, so trees, planters because all this is better done within Unreal Engine. I will just touch on how to import much nicer assets into Unreal Engine itself. <clears throat> so we've got all that. The furniture, well that doesn't offend me actually, so the furniture and all that sort of stuff will just leave and there are tons of other things you can do to this model to clean it up so it's better read in Unreal Engine. And actually what will, one thing I've, not, I've just spotted here. So this is an awful example of, of grouping. So what I would do is I would select all the same material and make that a group and then hide it off. Unreal Engine reads the groups. So you've got to make sure that it isn't just one. It isn't just one group. So right click, select, orbit material. This is a good tip anyway, really, for retrospectively rescuing a, a dodgy model. There we are. And for some reason, that's not doing that. So we'll just come back to that. Orbit save, hide. So leave that with me a sec, let me just sort that out and then we'll, uh, we'll be back. Right, that's the model somewhat up to speed, it won't be perfect. Something I did towards the end as well was just make sure that all the glass had a Thickness. Glass should always have a thickness in any rendering program. And what this model had was just two single planes behind one another. I just wanted to make sure that was sorted. Okay. There's going to be a few bits here that aren't perfect, but you'll still get the principle. So let's save that. And then extensions, Datasmith, export. Let's just export to desktop. That's the whole model exported. Then to open Unreal Engine, <clears throat> best practice is to go on your Epic Games launcher library and then launch the version that you want to choose 5.2 being the very latest and there's also a little teaser there of what's to come um, i'm doing obviously doing this in order where i'm releasing this video first on 
the basics of exporting from SketchUp into Unreal Engine. But then in a week or so's time, there's going to be a fantastic video on how to create an amazing snow scene. So make sure you subscribe for that one. So with the engine launched, you are then met with this window. What you want to do is you want to open an art, you want to go to the architecture tab and open a blank file. You then find a folder for it. So I'm just going to call it example, something like that. Select that folder, that's the location. And then let's just call it sample project. And Unreal doesn't like spaces. See the way it gives me a little warning there. So just do a little underscore if you want to separate the words. <clears throat> let's hit create. Now, little word of warning that when you launch Unreal for the first time, it, it does a thing called compiling shaders. And it sometimes can take forever. So just, if you're in a bit of a rush, just... Um, make sure you open um, Unreal Engine um, early doors, just early in the day or something, um, and just go and get a cup of tea or something and come back to it and it, it might be ready, or do other things. Anyway, let's go to our content drawer. Let's just turn that off. Let's go to our content drawer, and this is a very nice little tool. That I do like the way it snaps up and back. And then what we want to do is, in our content folder, we want to create a series of subfolders. So the first one being Datasmith. That's where our imports will land. We want to create one called Levels. That's where we'll create a new scene, almost a new project. And another one for materials. And we'll make some very simple materials during this video. So the first thing to do is in the levels, create a level. Just call it you know, sample scene, something like that. Jump in there, save selected is fine. Turn your mode to unlit, just so we can see without any environment light. And then in the quickly add to the project, little button up here, a little green plus, you'll see Datasmith. Datasmith is preloaded to the architecture template. File import. Desktop, and there it is. We then select the Datasmith folder that we've made. And then for the purpose of this exercise and the vast majority, you only want to bring in geometry and materials. <clears throat> you can create light maps, and that uses a technology called light baking, which is very common in the creation of games. But it's a very complicated process in terms of generating those light maps. You can auto generate them, but it's, it's not the right way to do it. So my recommendation, particularly with this video being for beginners, just tick geometry and materials. Import. And you'll see there it's saying prepare and shade and all that sort of stuff. We've got a little bit of one side of there, that's fine, so we'll sort that. <clears throat> okay. So there's our scene loaded in. If we go on lit now, we'll be able to see a thing. So what we want to do is add in a directional light there. But there's also something called the environment light mixer. And this is a nice way of just, if you, if you just hit the buttons, um, it gives you all the kind of environment lighting you could possibly need. So we will use that. So create skylight, create sky atmosphere, create the atmospheric light. And create the fog. We then go in lit, we've then got our full lighting system. That easy. And then they also appear 
here as well. So that's a great little sort of easy way in, if you like. With the directional light selected, just want to double check that atmosphere sunlight is ticked. Now I think that's ticked by default now in the, in the latest version. And then in terms of rotation, if we just mess with the middle one, minus 25, minus 10, minus 15, just gives you that really interesting light. And if you hold, if you, so if you press space, it changes the little gizmo. And if you get the rotation one, see the way it's moving the, the sunlight. If we go within the dwelling, and this is roughly a shot that will be taken, something like that. And then if you rotate around the Z axis, you can then get some fantastic lighting in there. <clears throat> Now, something you may notice is that light isn't passing through the glass. Now, the reason for that is it's still casting a shadow. So with the glass selected, in the search menu there, just type in cast and untick cast shadow. And then you'll get the full benefit there of the light. So one other thing to have a little play with is the exponential height fog. And this actually fills in your horizon line and creates, I think, a lovely little haze over the scene. I think that just makes it a little bit more realistic and adds a bit more, adds a bit more depth. Now, we've got bit of an issue here where we can't see the grass. Now, one little trick is to actually flip the normals using the amazing modeling mode. So if I just select these faces like so, I can then flip the normal, hit accept, and then there you go. But that is a little time consuming. I would recommend that you sort that in SketchUp or in your modeling software. But sometimes, especially in SketchUp, if I just show you the faces. Why is that facing the wrong way? <laughs> yeah. So that was facing the wrong way anyway, but in some cases it can it can be facing the right way and it still comes through a bit dodgy. So the key thing is is to change the material parameters to two-sided. So I've clicked on the grass, double click on the parent, and change that to two-sided. And that then sorts it out for us. Now really, before I do that, I've just hit a few undos just to undo that flip normal. And then it sorted that out. Are we still two-sided? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> That's one method, and then the other method for sorting that out is to actually replace the material. So that brings me quite neatly to an amazing little attachment, if you like, to Unreal Engine, which is Quixel Bridge, and it's Mega Scans, it's a Mega Scans library, so everything is scanned materials, absolutely phenomenal. What we want to do is, I just want to search for grass as a surface and 
let's just do something simple like mossy grass. You've got to sign into an Epic Games account before you can use this. Let's do high quality. Oh, let's download media. Add that to our scene. And then what you'll find is it adds a mega scans folder. And we click and drag that on. And then in here, we go down to the parent and we make that double sided. And that sorts that out as well. SketchUp hasn't got any inbuilt mapping tools. As in texture map and UV map and all that sort of stuff. So if you find that your UVs have come in too big or too small, in the mega scans textures, you can simply adjust the tiling X and Y. If I do 0.1 and 0.1, it then scales that up. So that's a, a good little bypass that to save you either buying a plug-in or something like that for SketchUp. Now you'll notice that we're getting a lot of grief from this lens flare. So, what we want to load in is, again, quickly add to project, visual effects, and it's something called a post-process volume. And this is something that dictates the look and feel of your entire scene. First things first, you type in unbound. And then if you tick that, it then affects everything in the scene as opposed to within that box. If you're wondering what the purpose of the box might be, if you give it a certain size, you can cover the garden and then you can do another one, cover the interior, and then you can change things like exposure settings and stuff like that as you move between the two volumes. But for now, we just want a master setting. And then in lens, lens flare, take intensity and drop that to something like 0 0.01. And here we go. And then while we're there, let's mess with the bloom as well. Change that to convolution. It's a more accurate version. And then do something like 0 0.05. And then we've just got a slightly more pleasant viewing experience now. But then you may notice that the exposure is kind of ramping up and down as well. <clears throat> so in here in exposure, metering mode, set that to manual and that's okay, everything goes dark. And in, in the exposure compensation, just bring that back up. Something sensible. Now, we've also got some really dark areas. And to sort that out, we need to improve the indirect lighting. You see now the way in the main directional light, we're getting a little bit of extra secondary lighting now. <clears throat> Let's just change that to five though. And then there is a setting within the uh, post-process volume. We may have, we may be overriding that now, actually, sorry. Forget that. <clears throat> We're overriding that here. So let's just leave that at that. That's fine. We may even, just to get this spot on. It may be nicer to just drop the intensity of the directional light. So see the way now it's a bit more even, it's not overexposed. And then lift the exposure to say 14 there.
just lifted the lighter touch as well. <clears throat> and then in the color grading settings, we can then just improve things like the gamma and we can reduce the contrast. Again, that blue is still far too much. <clears throat> is it the fog? 0 0.005. So we're now getting something that's a bit more evenly lit. One last thing when it comes to the environment lighting is then the skylight and it wants to be SLS captured scene and you want to tick real time capture. That then gives us that lovely soft bounce lighting like so. That then speaks to the indirect lighting that's kind of, you know, bouncing around the scene. Okay, so we're lit. We've had a little look at textures. Sorry, I'm just checking the exposure. Let's just drop that a little bit. There we go. Let's now create a camera. So quite a nice shot is something like this. And the easiest way to make a camera is just the burger menu. Create camera here and then Cine camera actor. To pilot the camera, you just hit on the perspective button there. And then select the camera itself. Your Y axis should always be zero, which gives you the impression of a two point perspective. And in the location, you can just mess with it on the Z axis. And so on, so forth. When you're happy with the view, come to the outliner, right click, transform, lock, actor, movement. That then keeps the camera in place. You'd be amazed how many times you'd move that. And then something to just bear in mind is, let's create some folders. Geometry, that's our main SketchUp geometry. One for cameras. And then the rest we'll just call environment lighting. <clears throat> now from this view, you can take a high resolution screenshot. Capture and it gives you the folder location there. And that is a simple shot of just what you're looking at. You can increase the resolution to two. Capture that, it just doubles the, doubles the size, see? But you'll notice that it doesn't give you the, the, the best quality outcome. Now, the better way to render in Unreal Engine is using the movie Render Queue. And we cover that on our lovely snow scene video, which is coming very soon. For now, we're just gonna, this is just a very, you know, very much an introduction. It's just getting us into a Unreal Engine from SketchUp. So, <clears throat> Something that I'm looking at here, the you can see there that the, the two-sidedness isn't working there. So I'm just going to just check the parent materials. <clears throat> glass is a, a, a different one. Actually, you shouldn't really mess with <laughs> mess with the glass. On on the use of glass, a quick way to replace glass in the scene is using the starter content. 
and the most efficient way of replacing materials within your scene is to replace the parent. So you select the object under the materials tab, double click there, and then with the material selected that you want to use to replace it, you then just hit this little arrow and then it replaces all the materials with, with that material applied from SketchUp. Now there might be duplicates of that. So you need to just go around and just check. Just try two sided. I think that's dodgy. Okay, so you can see how we're, we're working the thing up a little bit. Let's have another look at Quixel Bridge and just replace the floor material. Let's try and find something that's polished. <clears throat> Let's maybe go to collections of the surface. Well, you know what? It's actually a good opportunity to Let's just go for that high quality add. Now the good thing with Unreal Engine is that you can also approach it from a drag and drop perspective. So we can drag and drop it there. Hit this little eject button to come out of the camera view. And then I was looking for something a little more polished. So with the Mega Scans materials, you can as I've shown, you can increase the size with the tiling. The lower the number, the larger the texture becomes because it's reducing the tiling. And then under roughness, you can just lower the max roughness and it gives you that polished look. Let's just have If we then go back to our camera view, you can see the instant impact that has had. If we go in our fog, something to check is volumetric fog, and it's just a bit more realistic and a little more subtle. If we then just apply one more material, collections of this this time, and then we'll do interior plaster. We'll import the wall paint. And then we'll replace the parent like so. The albedo tint gives you the option to change the colors like so. We'll just go for white. And again, the roughness, just want to drop that a fraction, just so we're getting just some nice subtle reflections in the walls. Then, <clears throat> I do think our directional light has gone a little here we go. It's gone a little flat, hasn't it? <clears throat> so then if we move into the post-process volume, obviously we, we, we haven't replaced the materials. I will, I will come back to that in a sec. But if we go to our post-process volume, what we then want to understand 
is the global illumination and reflections. In the release of Unreal Engine 5, they introduced a method of global illumination called Lumen, which is just mega advanced and it works in real time. It's very realistic and it works in real time. So when the sunlight changes, it calculates all the knock-on effects. And within the global illumination settings, we want to tick three things. The lighting quality, the scene detail, and the final gather quality. They are all simply quality settings. And if you drag them all across, you get them the kind of maximum look. And the purpose of getting the best look here is obviously gives you the opportunity to produce better screenshots. But it does then affect your renderings later down the line. Then the other one is reflections. And a recent introduction is this high quality translucency. So let's drag the quality to the to the max there, number two. We change the method to hit lighting for reflections. This is the highest reflection quality method. And then high quality translucency, it then just gives us higher quality reflections in the, um, in the glass. If we then just, let's just replace some of these really dodgy materials. And then we'll just touch on some camera settings. So let's just get a, sorry, I meant to click on stone tile. You'll see once we load this in, the instant impact. These mega scan materials have. Especially when compared to the awful kind of standard SketchUp ones. And you'll notice that that's rotated 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees you know, from that. You can resolve that in the modeling mode where you can project UVs. So down here, UVs. We want to do project and then we can rotate like that. And then we want to do an equal amount in the dimensions. Let's just do 100 by 100 by a hundred apologies needed to change that to the box method 90 degrees and then 100 by 100 and then leave it there so that's how you rotate that and that's how you actually can change uvs and, and things like that within the engine again it's nicer to kind of be in the engine and make those changes than Sort of you know, spending forever in the in your modeling software. If you hit the little um, magnifying glass in the folder, it actually takes you to the folder location of you know whatever you're looking for. The reason I've done that is to just replace the soffit material. There. Before we get to camera settings, I do want to just demonstrate how to create your own materials. So in here, obviously we've made our folder materials, right click, new material. Let's call this black gloss and we'll change the kitchen to a black gloss. Then it's good practice to create a material instance, similar to using components in, in SketchUp. The use of components keeps the file size down and keeps it efficient. Well, an instance here is like that, it's like a, like a component of the material. So you, you should be using the instant material throughout the scene. It keeps things slick. But also the instance material can be changed in real time. 
<clears throat> and let me show you what I mean. So, within the material editor, we won't go into too much detail here because this can be quite overwhelming. Just select or hold three and left click. And that is just a three value vector that we can then plug into the base color. And the reason you want the three value is it's then it's RGB, so it gives you all the colors. And we do just want to use a dark gray in this instance, but it's good practice that. And then whilst holding one, click in space, and then that's just a, a single value. Plug that into roughness, and then you can set a, a value of 0.5, for example. We've just saved that off. If we had the material applied there, it doesn't make the changes until you've saved it. Whereas if we apply the instance, it can change in real time, but not without converting this constant. Did I say vector before? I think, I think it's actually, apologies, it's called a constant. Um, you right click it and convert it to a parameter. Give it a name, roughness, hit save. And then in the instance of that material, that parameter then appears, and then you can play with it on a sliding scale, and it reacts in real time, which is just absolutely fantastic. If we go back here and just make sure it's double-sided, just so we can get past the back-facing stuff. Now we can apply it there. actually docked if that's if that's getting a bit frustrating you can then dock it like so just a little bit easier to navigate isn't it Sure, why it's creating a, a second one, but then anyway, you get the idea. You can <laughs> you can dock it and then it, rather than constantly you know, dragging that out, or as I've said in the past, you can replace the parent material like so. That's the ultimate way. Of replacing the material. Something that something else that does stand out is this metal. I think if we go in collections, arc viz, surface, and then there is something on you know, pristine metals. Let's load in that brushed. Brushed steel, there it is. Sometimes a um, quick soap bridge can be a little waggy. Right, so. Again, replace the parent material. And then look at that, that's so much more realistic. And again, if we give it a little albedo tint, albedo is just another term for the color. see the header we're getting somewhere with it now I did mention so sorry I, I keep putting the camera one off but I want to finish on that one other thing I did want to touch on was utilizing the epic marketplace so the marketplace is an amazing Asset library, basically, it's an external asset library. It's all geared towards Unreal Engine. 
and you can bring in entire scenes like this and utilize all the things that are within it you can just you know you can load the bed in you can load those chairs in and things like that and every time you um whether it's purchasing something or sometimes they're free they then end up in your library here so you can see how i've um <clears throat> how i've built up a, a mini library so far and one thing i wanted to just touch on was the introduction of higher quality assets so i've selected on the mega scans trees i've hit add to project and i've selected the sample project so we're just waiting for that to load in and you know what while we do let's go back to our camera here let's select it now i've locked the position i do want to just unlock it a sec I just feel like I want to be a little bit towards the left there. So transform, lock, active movement. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to... Create a standard... Focal length. So in the universal zoom there, you can come down to say like 30, 30 mil, 50 mil, and 12 mil, like that. But actually, I think to suit this one, I'm just gonna go back to universal zoom so we can change to say a 20, something like that. Maybe even, or, Keep it to 20 and we will just mess with the movement just so we've got a little bit of some but just something framing it left and right let's then just lower it a fraction that's a bit more of an interesting camera angle you don't want to show everything at once okay and then something that's really good within the um, within Unreal Engine is the focus settings. So if we draw that plane on, it then gives you a focus distance. So if I set that to say the, the sofa there, we then reduce the aperture and it improves bolsters the the amount of blur if I just I need to just use a bit more of an extreme example there we go so <clears throat> I've brought that plane right towards the camera and if we increase the aperture it then reduces the effect of the blur it's also affecting the exposure settings as well as you can see so if we go back to two, we can just move that focus a bit further away. And we've just got that little bit of, that little bit of um, depth of field, which obviously is a very realistic look. Now we've, because we've reduced the aperture, we've increased the exposure. So I like to then locally change that within the camera itself. So you might do that, you drop it quite a bit. <clears throat> and then just reduce the aperture again. And that's quite a quite a nice look. There are more advanced settings. If I could, I'll just point you to where they live. In the color grading area and the film area, there are things like toe and slope that you can really start to fine tune the look and feel. But we won't, we won't overwhelm just yet.
and our mega scans trees are nearly with us now. So the way it's saying adding to project. So what it's doing is it's adding folders to the um, to the project now where we can then access these trees. Sort that. Yeah, that water. We'll just we'll just swap it for glass, just so it's a little bit more realistic. You know. Start the content materials. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Obviously, it wouldn't be mirror like, but. got an awful metal material here as well let, let me just let me just sort that out because the materials that don't have any like reflection on them like that it actually hurts the overall bounce lighting so let's just get another metal now, there's something on Facades, I'm sure there is. Ultimate facades. Even something like that'll do. Are our trees ready, right? They look like they are. Let's just tweak this material first. Two, so just nice big panels. And then in terms of the trees, sometimes the folders are a little unusual. I was expecting that to be a mega scans, but it's there in black folder. And then I want to go to geometry. And simple wind is just it's just got a simple wind effect on it. And then if you drag and drop it in, sometimes it takes a sec. The, the, um, the geometry is quite complex. You can see there, you can see where it's just rocking in the wind there, which is an amazing little feature. Remember, space to um, <clears throat> change your gizmo there. And you'll notice there that it was scaling it down in huge increments. And that's these little snapping tools here. And I actually prefer to just remove them all so I've got maximum control. And then what would be nice is just a little bit of something as a backdrop. For the scene if you hold alt and drag it then creates duplicates like so if we then just let's just drag another one in Something like that. High resolution screenshot, set it to two, capture. And then if we compare the two, it's come a, a long way in a short space of time. You can see there the depth of field 
is hurting that a little bit too much. And also you can see the box got the um, post-process volume. Something I should have said was if you tap G, it gets rid of all the symbols. Sometimes it takes a little while to save as well. It's a big beast, this Unreal Engine. It's just some of these things you've just got to get used to. The, the auto save takes a while, the compiling shaders takes a while, and things like that. But with it being a, a sizable program and a lot to kind of navigate, it's um it it's it, it's more advanced, so it gives you, you know, much better results. So it's a hundred percent. You're obviously watching this video because you're interested in creating visuals and cinematics and stuff in Unreal Engine, and I'll tell you that it's it's absolutely worth the learning curve. Um so yeah, so let me just so if I tap G there. I just drag a little light in, let me just drag a spotlight in. See the way it's got like a little a little symbol there. If you tap G, it gets rid of that. And they appear in the screenshot. So if I hit G now to remove them. High resolution screenshot. Two. And these screenshots are like instant, aren't they? So these are good for showing clients little previews as well. So you can see there the box, that box has, has gone now. You actually see the, the trees are in a slightly different position as well. Now the, these still aren't the best renders. The, as I say, this, this isn't the way to, to get uh, final renders. But it's a great way of just, just getting you into the program and, um, and showing you, you know, the, the basics, how to import from SketchUp, how to get over some of the other hurdles like the the two-faced materials and all that sort of stuff. And then soon, you'll be using the Path Tracer to create real high quality visuals. If you want to learn more about that, we have got a, a really detailed interiors course at parkademia.com. <clears throat> but otherwise, thanks for watching this video. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.